So I just want to show you a swing. It's definitely not perfect. It's me. It's 10 minutes ago. Uh, but when you look at the graph and you look at the swing, uh, you, you'll see some stuff that, um, that you know, you see in regular lessons, right? So one of the things that I've noticed that I really never heard anybody talking about in the golf swing is what I call droop. And, and what is droop? That droop is not the fact that I'm trying to hit a draw right here and I'm, I'm taking this club back more inside because I was just on this swing trying to turn earlier because I, I wanted to show you guys the difference of a couple different backswing looks. But let me switch around here to the other, the other screen so I can show you what it is and how to look at it on um, in the hack motion graph. So when you're set up at a dress, you set up with a, with a certain amount of radial and on the deviation, right? <laughs> you, you have a certain number. On this particular swing that I made, it was, uh, it was 34, okay? So I started with 34, and uh, I, I tell people, listen, you can, you can pretty much calibrate this, these devices to any kind of way you want to calibrate. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a certain way to do it, but I've experimented with a couple of different calibration techniques and you just got to know, you just got to do it the same way all the time so you know what you're looking for. Okay, so I started with, we'll look at the graph here in a second. I just want to kind of demonstrate 34 and I, Manzella term, dumped it to 38. So what I did was I had 34 degrees of basically wrist cock at a dress and in the takeaway, partly because of what I was trying to do, which I'll explain in a little bit, a couple different patterns that I, that I piddle around with, I lost some of this radial deviation. I went sort of toward Alma a little bit. This is a super common issue you see with regular folks. So let's see, we'll go. Uh, this will be a good one right here. We'll use this one instead. Okay, so there I start right here, 34, and it goes to, I guess it goes all the way to 39. So that changes a whole bunch of things in your, in your golf swing. Basically, if you look at it like this, if I'm in this portion of swing where you can see the club right on my hand, which lots of folks like, I'm not saying everybody has to do it or thinks that way because I, I play pretty good sometimes from under that. But if you took this position and you just took some of that wrist cock out, all of a sudden now the club's, you know, through my ankles basically. And I see people trying to, to fix the, the lift or, or try to keep the club more outside the hands or all of this other stuff. When if you had a hack motion or a hack motion two and you put it on somebody, this is a pretty easy graph to look at right away. So just to show you that, you know, what this, we'll go back to this again. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go live on my, uh, on the video, put a little bit more light on it. So what I'm gonna do here, try to get in the same place relative to the, to the lines here. I'm just gonna on purpose try to keep more radial on the backswing. So either you, some people feel it as low hands and high toe, but just to show you how easy you can make a little different swing. And I, I hit a pretty good shot there. 172 yard, seven iron shot. You can see that this amount of what I call droop disappeared to, to a large extent, right? It, it goes from 31 to 32 or 33 and the swing before, right? It, it changed about five degrees. Now, if your student or yourself working on your own golf swing, uh, if you, um, if you have it in there and works out fine for you, God bless you. But it's just one thing that I really didn't hear. I don't really hear people talking about that much in a golf swing. And there's a hundred things you can do. You can get, you know, hanger exercise, there's a million exercises you could do, but basically 
the simplest way to look at it would be if you if I took my right hand right and I and I've gripped it down the grip a little bit right here okay and I put my right hand underneath my forearm but on the, above the grip as you can give you a couple different angles of what I'm doing here right this kind of action so because I gripped way down the grip way way down I got almost four fingers in there I'm going to grip a little less down the grip and go with three fingers. So now with that three finger feel and it's in there, I can make some takeaways and just try not to crunch my fingers. And you could go to, to a live mode here. Go with this and go um, live on the, you can see what, what I got here, 20, 30 right here and I still got I still got 30. If I went to two fingers, that's 34. So on that swing, I basically went from three fingers of, of uh, the golfing machiners out there, number three accumulator angle to two in the takeaway. And it's, it's unless it's built into your swing or there's something good about it, or some reason you're doing it, it's something that I, I can promise you, you really, off, off the top of my head, not, not a real good reason to do it. Let's go back to um, full screen here. And chart. Okay, so this was the last, second to last wing. Okay, so let's go back to the full, full graph here. Okay, all right. So what this is showing here, the slope of this, this graph right here is showing the how the rate how how fast I'm cocking my wrist on the backswing right and what I like to see and I highly recommend is that this line does not go up like this after impact now what what, what does that mean that, that just means that just means that I've put a certain amount of radial deviation in I, I did it a reasonable amount before the top maybe looking at my swing, that's pretty much the end of my backswing. So about right here, I had a certain amount of radial in there. And then in this particular swing, in transition, I added wrist cock, float loaded or down cocked or whatever you want to call it. And I used to be a, a pretty big proponent of it. Like, hey, you know, Hogan does it. Right? We don't really know that that's what he did because he could have he could have done it with he could have done it with extension, but but either way, you know, people thought it was a good idea to do. Well, I can tell you, having had you know a couple of hundred different you know people for sure on, on hack motion, this is not something you necessarily want. And ideally, you know, if I if I just hit, I'll show you, just hit a little pitch here, just a little basic pitch shot. You can see. <laughs> There's nothing there. And if I added a little, if I just added a little bit of wrist cock and added a little bit of wrist cock on the other end, I get this nice, what I call flat top right here. I added a certain amount of radial deviation. I got to pretty much a point where it was that way. I went through the top that way and I came out of the top that way. I, I cannot tell you how much I think that's what you ought to be attempting to get people to do. I know there's a million patterns and I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Customized Patterns, but you know, at some point, and I really wanted to kind of focus on this and when, when we start taking questions, I wanted to show people what I think you know, works better. So in this swing right here, while I go back to this, um, We'll just put this one up because I can kind of stare into the camera right here and kind of do hand signals, at least in the little small window. This this was the the the, the swing that I did before that swing. And you I mean, you know, two swings ago right here. That was that one, right? So this this is a little bit better version. I maxed my wrist cock out. This is the one where I did a little better job of not dumping, right? Not, not drooping on the backswing. 
I, I call it dumping on the other side, but you know, Brian always names things. So this one where it kind of goes a little bit more, you know, a little flatter across and really basically keeps maintaining that. So why is this a big deal? Because as the guys with hack motion can tell you, you get this somewhat coupled motion of the wrists when you're uncocking, it tends to, you know, do one thing, flexion extension, you're cocking, it tends to do the other. And this is this is this particular uh, flexion extension graph. This would be what I would suggest is, for the most part, standard for me. Not necessarily how much of the slope is that way, just that the slope is that way. So what I'll do is I'll take these two lines off the. Ah, oh, we can leave them on there. I don't think it's going to matter when I get over here. So I kind of show you what this is with a little bit longer club, right here, like seven iron. So what I'm suggesting is your wrist is starting a certain amount extended. You can see that'll be this number right here. What is that? 17 degrees. Okay, I've done more. 17 degrees. And then it's going to work toward, toward, just toward flexion. It doesn't have to do what this swing did which is, I did this on purpose to put a big old wave in there. I, I, I tried to get a lot of flexion at this, let's say left arm parallel in the backswing, a lot of flexion, pretty decent amount. Because what I see in the best golf swings I have studied and the best swings I've got myself to make is you're gonna make some sort of a wave. So you gotta kind of plot your strategy <laughs> on where the wave's gonna be. And I like it to go toward flexion, come out of flexion so the club doesn't get too laid off and too far behind the golfer. Then what, what will tend to happen is this little bitty piece up here where there'll be like a little last second move toward flexion late in the backswing. So it's been taking the flexion out, you've added it, you're taking it out, and now as you're sort of loading everything up, you'll start to working toward flexion again. And then you get one nice little run of flexion on the downswing, peak that sucker right about where that is, and then take it out. I've seen people say it's perfectly okay to get the bottom of that, whatever you want to call it, the bottom of the check mark, looks like a check mark to me the bottom of that green check mark. Oh, it's perfectly okay to have it at impact. I'm gonna tell you from somebody who, at some point somebody said, I had the flattest left wrist in golf. It's not something you want. <laughs> I don't care if the number one world player in the world does it. I'm just telling you in general, if you are adding flexion right up to the point of impact, you've got this dicey club face position because you're gonna you're gonna be de-lofting it as you come into the ball, and that's gonna change your, you know, how long you know that you reach basically your radius to the ball, and all bets are off basically if you if you don't start taking it out or even leveling it off. I mean, I don't think you can really do that very much, but I've seen swings where people kind of leveled it off. So that's what I I kind of like to see that much slopity dopity there, not so much. But now. Let's talk about the, the, the radial and ulna when it comes to, uh, basically what I want, would like to see is what, what, what happens here. The peak of the flexion happens first, and then you start to take that out. And then the peak of the extension happens, uh, the radial and ulna, dumped as much as you're going to dump and then it starts going back up the other way happens just after that. When those two things are too close to the ball, when they get or, or past the ball, when the, when the bottoms or the valleys, if you want to call them that, because the peaks would be going the other way. If the valleys are on the other side of impact, you're in the hands of the Philistines. I'm just telling you right now, it's not anything you want to do. And then lastly, you look at the rotation graph. I'll take these two out. This particular one right here is 44. You know, I hit a push right out. I'm trying to remember the shot. I think it was 3.1 inside out and 
some amount of, um, it drew a little bit, but it was still kind of a push draw. You saw the, you saw the backswing was mostly a, um, a, uh, you know, inside swing. So that number, that number is going to pretty much be that this, this wrist sensor right there, which is, that's what that number is, that little purple, is going to be more turned out to right field and impact no matter what shot you hit, unless you're hitting some, I don't even know what kind of crazy <laughs> shot you would hit that it would be closed, but it would have to be the pull cut of all time. So that's, you know, just overall what I like to see for the most part, and I'm, I can show you a million different possibilities because I one thing I can do is make different kinds of golf swings. So I'd really like to start taking questions right away. Stand All right. Uh, Rob is asking, can you suggest any good drills to reduce down cocking in the downswing in a student? Yeah, I can. So um, if you, if you, if you think about it, right. What you're going to have to do, I'll get my, I'll get our little airplane right here to kind of make this point. If you're gonna, if you have the club up here in a normal top of the backswing, not a little short top of the backswing position, this is gonna be your basic, just so you know with this Jacobs 3D airplane, you just have a, just putting an axis perpendicular to the score lines and vertical to the score lines, that's, that's all you're doing. So you can kind of see when the club gets all upside down, what the heck's going on in the golf swing. So here I am in the normal top of the backswing. If I'm, my, radial and ulna, well, maybe I'm a little too close right there. So watch what I'm doing here so y'all can follow me, folks are watching. So here I am at the top, right? This kind of look, right? With my club face, right? So radial and ulna is this way. It's, you know, from the bottom of the, basically the wings working towards you or working away from you. So when you're making this down cock, basically the force that's creating that action is alpha force is just force on the top of the grip. The same force that you would put on the grip here, this way, as I push down on the grip, see that made the, that made the toe come toward my head. That's the, that's the force, like basically thumb up, left thumb up is making that happen. So best drill I've ever seen for this, and I'll do one right now just to show you how smart this guy was. He doesn't really teach us much anymore, but so what I got right here, and we'll go to the other screen, is go this way. Put on a little more light. So this is a, th a three hybrid. This is about the best club for this. And so what you tell somebody, so just so you know, I can hit a three hybrid about 225 or 230, no big deal, right? The, the, the best players in the world hit it 50 yards past me. So here's a three hybrid. Now you, you, you go over to your student, you say, got a three hybrid? No, I got one, here you go. Now, hit this ball 120 yards, but make basically a full swing. Okay, can I hit this thing 120 or 130? You see the shot here real quick. So I made a convincing full swing. That's what you want your student to do. So watch just so you have something to kind of go by here. Um, very sorry, my track man numbers are just black right now. But just so you know, 0 0.6 path, 1.1 face, seven foot of curve, 14 foot offline. So I hit a good shot, it went straight. Okay, so now let's go to the graph. We'll go to like normal size right here. Okay, so now you're gonna be able to see it. Okay, you're not gonna flat top that sucker any better than that. So let's take off the flexion extension and take off the rotation graph. And there's a little bitty teeny meeny noise right here, right? But you can see that thing is as flat as the top of Howie Long's head right there, right? <laughs> and, and so 
and, 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 and it's all well-timed. You know, if you look at my flexion extension graph is good and where the wrist cock starts reoccurring, it's all good. It was a good swing. I had, I had a really good shot. So when you, um, when you make that sort of swing, if you, if you have any force up on your thumb right here that makes the wrist cock down, or, or even if you're sort of like what I, I, I've been struggling with is sort of adding extension on the downswing, and I'll explain that in a second, not anything you really want to do either. If, if you do this and you take out a 20 degree, 18 degree club and you try to hit a straight shot, it won't go straight. It'll just go straight right. It was a brilliant observation by, by Tommy Losinger, it's his, his drill. And if you can make a, I once suggested to somebody, you know, who was working with a really famous player who was having handle drag, dragon problems, just take out a three wood. And this, this guy's the best player in the world and said, okay, have him hit 220 yard high three woods. There's no way to do that and down cock it because you're never going to be able to get it. You're never going to be able to get it out on the other side. So you, you get this nice, even change of direction with that particular club and, and that shot. And I think it's um, just a brilliant, easy, simple way to do it. We'll work with a three iron or something like that, but obviously a hybrid's an easier, an easier club to work with. There's a question of what body pivot matchups go with respective wrist angles at the top, bowed versus flat versus slightly extended and into the downswing. So matchups of uh, wrist angles and body pivot. So what I did right there, I'll show you the swing, is I tried to go really flexed and pretty centered. And it works out okay for, for some people because what happens is, now I'll, I'll play it back for you right here and show you the graph. It's a funny little graph now. It's got the double hump in it. But if you're centered like this, this is a little more centered than I like, but I'm just trying to make the matchup. And also I've got way more flexion in my wrist. Now you, you basically, it's easier to start the ball left, swing direction left, okay? If you're leaning more left. So I'm leaning more left than I normally do. And my swing direction was more left than it normally is. So now I've got this flexed wrist, which club face is less open generally. And in this swing, certainly it is. So I, you know, I, I flushed it but I hit it 62 feet offline, right? So you have to really watch. I just, I did that one because it's an easy combination. I'll show you the, um, the graph now. It ain't pretty. There's the graph. So what, what I did in this, in this particular swing, a couple things you don't want to do. Let's go blue here. First of all, while I was making my backswing, my, my, Radio and all that went all over the place because I was just trying to figure out how I'm going to not like miss the screen with this shot, which I almost did, by the way. It started pretty far left for me. So, I, I, okay, reasonable right there, but watch what happened to my, watch what happened to this. So because I went toward flexion early or, or, or it didn't go toward flexion early. I went toward flexion late, sorry. I, I waited, right? I waited so that I could have a lot of flexion at the top, then I maxed out the, the flexion at the top. Now what I have to do is I have to take it out just to make a downswing. And I would either have like some massive amount of extension and impact, or I got to reflex it to hit it. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, that is probably the hardest thing to get anybody to be able to play with that I've learned in my hack motion era, a double hump in the graph, meaning that just like on this swing, I went in the downswing, I went toward extension as I went this way. And then I had not, I can't keep going toward extension. <laughs> I'm gonna hit a lob shot. 
So now to hit down on this ball and hit some kind of a normal shot, I got to reflex it. Now it's way late. My hands are way up here flexed and they're just not going to be able to start going into extension soon enough. And you're going to have this. Basically, if you hit draws, like I try to do with my irons, that's why I have a new set of irons where I'm kind of trying to take some of this draw stuff out. But if you try to hit draws with that double hump, I think it's easier to hit fades doing it because you, you either the ball, if, if you try to hit a fade, you get that double hump. We talk about better players now. You'll, you'll either hit it, you know, kind of where you're swinging, which is left, or it'll, it'll go ahead and bleed. And if you really are moving toward extension and impact, it might, might cross your center line a little bit, right? So it's usable. But with a draw, all of a sudden, you get combo shots where they, you know, pretty good path and way left face like I did on that one, or you think that's going to happen. So what do you do? You, you try to get, you, when you finally go back into flexion down by the ball, you go further into flexion. Now you get this bizarro like push, you know, push shot that you try to save with spin while you're in flexion. It's just not a good thing. So basically just think about what you're doing with the, with the combinations. You have to find some kind of way to make it work. And I think that if you're going to go with a swing that's a lot of flexion, you got to really baby, like, there's a lot of players doing it now, right? Because I think the reason they're doing it is they can swing real hard and it can't over flex. But you, you, you got to watch because you're going to have to try to take this thing all the way to close to impact without going back toward extension. And the pivot versions that you're going to have to use to make that work are going to be, uh, you can call me and let me know which ones work because I can tell you it's about the worst possible thing you could ever do in, uh, in, a, in a pretty good player golf swing as far as, you know, something you'll see um, with the sensor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next uh, question is about that you mentioned a lot about radial ulnar deviation peaking out before impact, not after impact. And can you evaluate uh, a little bit more complications of this peak after impact maybe okay. regarding trackman numbers yeah 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 so so oh that's that's a good question um let me hit this shot where i do it really poorly through the ball and i'll tell you what i'm thinking when i'm doing it wow what a shot so show you the graph here because you know, I just want to get to as many questions as I can. So there was a, there was a thought at some point, let's go this way. There was, that wasn't that bad. There was a thought at some point in, in my golfing machine days that what you would try to do is, I just want to show you what I'm, I'm saying right here, that you would try to go to full, fully uncocked in the follow through when, when both arms are straight right here. So if you do that, if you actually went to fully uncocked through the ball, watch this nasty looking graph right here. Even though like I know I'm supposed to do this, <laughs> you can see you get these like phony baloney, you, you know, you don't want to do that because when you, when you uncock enough, all this extra stuff right here. What'll start happening is this little actually halfway decent little move back toward uh, radial right here will disappear if you if you keep working on uncocking through the ball. When you uncock fully, you knew this from the golfing machine days. This is much easier to rotate than if you have some radial deviation. So you get shaft spin whatever you want to call it. Everybody knows what it is, right? And it's not a really good thing to do. So what it's going to do, unfortunately, with uh, TrackMan is the angle of attacks. Because something's going down. The down is coming from you, you know, going thumbs down, which is, you know, on the deviating down with both wrists. And the club just keeps going down, down, down. The club goes and your, your hands go up, up, up. And you wind up with, in TrackMan, you wind up with high swing plane numbers and big angle of attack. So just on that last shot, just so you know, set, I know it was a little short game shot, 77 swing plane. 
my normal is 55 or six with a seven. So you really, <laughs> it, I, I highly recommend finding something like the, the Martin Chuck has this um, device he sells. I'm trying to see if I just accidentally find it here. You know, when you're doing a quick show like this, it's this strap you put on your arm. It limits how much you can set it so that you can't on the deviate past a certain point. You can, but you're not gonna because it hurts. So you just put it on and everybody kind of feels like, oh, I'll just, I just won't go thumbs down here. And you, it's unbelievable, great, high recommendation. And you know, the only problem is, is that it, it goes on your left wrist and you can't really, I've done it to test it and it does great. So what I think I'll probably do, Rhinos, in the, in the, in the uh, in the future is do the right wrist sensor while I have the, <laughs> while I have that device on the left wrist and you'll get similar um, good information on uh, the fact that you're not dumping that angle through the ball. All right, uh, then we can take the last question. Uh, what is the easiest graph to emulate for a normal club golfer? Hills with flat peaks is the question. Yes, so let's go to this one. We have around three minutes for this yeah, question. Yeah, gotcha. All right, no, this wrong one. There we go. Okay. So if you just taught people to flex, extend, flex, extend, and you said, okay, let's hit a little shot, flex, extend. You can see, I flexed, I bottomed out, I extended. And you say, okay, if you can do that, most anybody can. I think that's how everybody who never had a golf lesson first ever hit their first ball in the air. Now you just say, okay, now you flex. Now go ahead and point the club to the target. Flex, point the club to the target. Now, now you're going to get a little, you're going to get a little wave here, right? You're going to get a little flex. Take it out a little bit, add it back in. And unfortunately for Brian, he has the double hump disease right there. Not a good thing, I can promise you. So it's affecting my track man, uh, Pebble Beach Combine score. <laughs> so it's one of those things where the, the flexion extension one is the easiest one to get folks to, um, to emulate because most people are trying not to go toward extension because the internet's full of this kind of look, right? And they think they're not supposed to, and you can got 320 people here that know that probably not a good thing. And you can, I, I use, of, of all the things that I use the uh, biofeedback for, you know, you got somebody that's never quite got that left wrist in a good position at the top, just make it pretty tough where you want the angels to sing in the middle. And they'll, there's just like nobody ever, you know, like people used to argue with me all the time. Look, you're swinging way too far inside out. When the orange machine came out, nobody argues with that. If you're telling somebody, hey, here's where I want your wrist right here. And the, the angels are singing, the biofeedback's going, ah, uh, okay. They know it's doing it. They go here and they pose it one time. Uh, and I say, okay, hit a shot and it doesn't come on, and they, they're not arguing with you. They're not looking at the video. They know they didn't get to whatever range you set. And obviously uh, getting that club face in a better position at the top for the average club golfer is a, is a huge thing. And there's never been a better product or a better bunch of people running a, a company than these guys and they'll support you. Uh, I know a lot of folks are probably watching this that don't have a, a device and maybe they're either thinking about getting one and people ask me all the time because I, I have a bunch of stuff in here. God only knows what I spent in the studio, but I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, for the money, there's nothing that you can directly improve your understanding of how the golf swing works or your ability to change people in real time, which is what golf lessons should be anyway, right? While, while you're on the clock, you, you, you make them better than, than the hack motion device. And I'm, I'm very excited about using the, the two, you know, with, with the, I've been just using it on myself and a couple of people, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go out in the field with it because the, it is a little bit lighter and, and uh, it's, uh, it's fun to use the straps or I think are an upgrade. And uh, like I said, 
the support is uh, is world class, and that's that's uh, important when you when you invest in your money in, in anything. So um, I really appreciate you guys um, giving me a shout to um, to do this. And anytime y'all got anything, I'll be the first guy lined up. Thanks for the kind words, Brian. Really excellent presentation and uh, excellent demo. Really really appreciate your time as well. All right. Uh,